I'm Crystal, this is my husband Gerard, and we're owners here at Prairie Bee Meadery. What she said. At its most basic, mead is any alcoholic beverage that is made by fermenting honey. If you start with honey and you end with booze, it's mead. So it's a very, very different taste profile than, say, a grape wine, because there's no grapes in it. And it tends to be, we find, a lot smoother. Like, it doesn't have a lot of bite. Mead is very appealing, so it doesn't have the same kind of rules that you have with a, a grape wine. Honey and, you know, blueberries or honey and strawberries is just a healthy breakfast. That's right. right. That's what's in the bottle. <laughs> Originally, my parents bought this property and they wanted to grow fruit on it. They planted sour cherry trees. They ended up getting into a whole world of prairie horticulture, doing strawberries and raspberries and melons and peppers and tomatoes, and a whole bunch of stuff. And then they decided that they needed to have bees. And the sort of side effect, of course, of having bees was that then, of course, we had a whole lot of honey and deciding what to do with the honey was kind of where this started. There's a whole series of things we can blame for getting into this business. We can blame the praise of others, you know, for saying that the mead tasted good. Which it does. We can, we can blame <laughs> the weather and we can blame our own organizational activities. <laughs> but here we are. Prairie Bee has been around since 2016. We've won 32 international awards. We haven't gone to an award place for a while now because we want some other folks to uh, have a shot at it, right? Sure. <laughs>so when we do a tour, this is, this is our first stop. We get people to come on out um, and take a look at these boxes so that they can get an idea of what a beehive looks like when we're working it. This is the type of hive that we use. So inside, obviously, we have our tower of boxes. Each box has a series of frames inside, which is where the bees will do their work. We like to demonstrate a foundation frame, which is this guy, which is what we use before the bees have done any work on it or built any wax. So that goes in there um, and gives them a structure to work on. And then, of course, once the bees are done with it, we have a full kind of uh, wax comb in place. It gets put on both sides of the frame. So the bees build that wax up right to the edges. And then every one of those cells is going to get packed with honey before it gets capped with another layer of wax to help seal it in. So when we go in to harvest, this is what we're going to pull out. We pull out our, our frames. Um, we'll very gently kind of break that wax cap. The frames go into an extractor. They get spun around really, really fast. And then, of course, all of the honey comes flying off and we collect it. Something a lot of people don't know is that honey will taste different based on the flowers that the bees have been working in. A traditional mead is one that is basically just honey and water. Those are the two main ingredients. But depending on which meter you get it from and where that honey has been sourced and the time of year that it was harvested, they're all gonna taste different. Even with our own traditional batch to batch, it's very different. When we're short of honey, uh, we work with a bunch of different local beekeepers. Uh, we kind of look for clover, alfalfa, and wildflower honey. So we, we work with a lot of locals in terms of getting honey, and we do what we can here, here on the farm as well. We really focus on fruit flavors because they're very accessible because people know what they are, and they recognize that they like to have them in a drink. We started out as an orchard, so we had a, a thousand sour cherry trees. We've got about 500 rhubarb plants, a, a, a lot of them. There's a lot of 497. <laughs> There's a lot of rhubarb. This is a German wine rhubarb, so it's uh, specifically for making wine. It's not like a, a Canadian strawberry rhubarb or whatever they're called. Um, oh, and Jared's pulling one off, a nice thick stalk. Uh, that's the job, and you don't want to eat it, you don't like rhubarb. For you. <laughs> For me? No thanks. I like the skinny tender shoots. This one will be much tastier. See? Tastes like rhubarb. 
you can imagine getting juice out of rhubarb, it's like blood from a stone, so we freeze it first. We use a standard winery press. This is what we would use for, for white wines. So we squish all the fruit, juice comes out, and that's what we use, we use our juice. After we've got the juice pressed and the honey is in the tank, we add water, that's our other main ingredient. That all gets mixed in and from there, it's just like every winery in the world. We fought about our company name. That was like a, a that was a weeks weeks long debate. I don't know how many things we we tossed around. I think Prairie B is where we settled because it's us. We're here on the prairies. It's our market. It's our origin, and the bees are everything to us. The nature of our agriculture globally is such that we've created a really complex symbiotic relationship with our insect pollinators and I think a lot of people don't really understand how deep that runs. 70% of North American crops are pollinated by honeybees. If we expect decent crop yields, we need our pollinators. A big part of what we do is about educating people about bees, about the necessity for, for good stewardship of our, of our pollinators, and that's something that's very easy to get passionate about. Once you start working with them and learning about them, they're really such magical, wonderful little, little creatures. So if you want to buy yourself a bottle of mead, you can visit us here at the winery, you can visit us at our store in the Grant Hall Hotel. We're out doing farmer's markets. And then of course, if you're already familiar with it, you can head to your local Sobeys or Urban Cellars or Co-op Liquor. And of course, we do sell online as well. It's, it's a job, it's a hassle, <laughs> it's an experience, it's, it's fun. So many different things and... Uh, and it's, it's an adventure. Yeah, it can be sucky one day and, and awesome the next, so it's... Uh, just kind of what you would expect from, I think, a lot of small businesses out there. If you have program ideas you'd like to see on Max TV Local, let us know at sastel.com slash local.